Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am really excited to talk to you about how you actually can afford an assistant. Uh, we are really good at lying to ourselves about things like I can't afford an assistant. My name is Sarah Bowley. I am a master coach with Workman Success System. I also have a real estate team with a partner in Maryland, and we live in Florida. So we are um, in love with systemizing and in love with doing it. And I can tell you I remember hiring my first assistant and how much I pushed back. So I know that we pushed back. I'm going to talk to you about that today. The uh, first thing I wanted to um, talk about is some of the lies we do tell ourselves, not just in terms of hiring an assistant, um, but mostly related to that. The biggest ones are you can't afford them. You tell yourself that all the time when you're thinking about hiring an assistant. Uh, another one that I myself use is I didn't have time to train them. Uh, we all you can say it's easier to do it myself. I would know how to hire them anyways. Or I just don't have time to grow my business or spend on my business. Again, none of these are true. So we tell themselves they're a good story that we tell our, tell ourselves. So let's uh, let's talk about these. Let's break them down a little bit. I'm sure some of you, if not all of you, are familiar with the what's called the Pareto principle, and we hear it often referred to as the 80-20 rule. Uh, it was an Italian economist in 1890 that discovered that society was kind of naturally divided into the vital few, or the top 20%, and the trivial many, or the bottom 80%. His name was Vilfredo Pareto, which is why it's called the Pareto Principle. And when he looked at it further, he realized that virtually all economic activity was subject to this principle in terms of 80% of the wealth of Italy during that time was controlled by 20% of the population. We've also recognized that it applies to how we spend our time. So generally, you'll see when you break down your time and look at it, about 20% of your activity yields 80% of your results. So when you think about that, 20% of your effort is creating 80% of your results. The rest is probably admin work. So you want to make sure you're doing the 20% and forget the rest. People often appear busy all day, very busy as real estate agents. Um, and yet we don't accomplish very much, you'll see. This might feel like a description of you even. I've seen agents work 10 hour days and their production just doesn't reflect that. And it's because they're working on low value tasks. They're working on their 80% tasks and ignoring the stuff that is actually gonna create an impact in their business. They're procrastinating or they don't wanna do it. But really you have to remember the most valuable tasks you do every day are the hardest and the most complex probably, but the payoff and rewards for completing them can be tremendous. That's your 20% stuff. The stuff that's going to pay off for you and create 80% of your impact. So before you begin something, you have to ask yourself, is this task a 20% task or is this task an 80% task? And if it's an 80% task, don't do it. If you choose to spend your day working on low-value tasks, you're going to develop a habit of always working on low-value tasks. And if you don't have an admin, you are an admin. I think instead of telling yourself you can't afford an assistant, you should tell yourself you can't afford not to have an assistant. Then you say to yourself, well, you're right, I probably do need one. Just looking at the Pareto principle, good call. But I can't pay them. So let's talk about that for a minute. And, and I'm using some average numbers here. I'm not saying you have to pay your admin $15 an hour, and I'm not saying you make $50 an hour. I know real estate agents who make $400 an hour. And there's some that make probably, you know, 30 something an hour. It really depends on your average sales price, how many transactions you do. So I'm going to put some low averages for the cost per hour, excuse me, the what an agent makes per hour, $50 an hour. And I went a little bit high on the admin. I know that there are some admins in some areas where it's about a $9 an hour job. I know some really high level admins that are, you know, $20 an hour job. So just look at some averages here. So if you think about five hours spent on admin work by an admin, it's going to cost you about $75 if we're assuming $15 an hour. If you spend five hours of 20% activities for yourself, assuming you make $50 an hour again, that could change. You could be $400 an hour, but let's go up. Then you're going to make $250 an hour. 
So if you have your admin while you're working on your 20%, you're still going to net $175. If you do the admin work, you're not only not doing the activities that are income producing, you're also costing yourself money. So every time you do something that is a $15 an hour to task and you're worth $50 an hour, you cost yourself $35 an hour. The admin doesn't have to be full time to start, but when you look at what you're costing yourself, again, you can't afford not to have one. This is uh, another economic theory, and I will admit I'm not an economist, but I found this really interesting as it applies to this. In this example, they're using Smarties and Dum Dums, but we'll go along with it anyways. Um, so the production possibilities curve is uh, opportunity cost. So it talks about how the more time you do spend on something, it's going to cost you in something else. The example here again, so if you're going to make 20 Dum Dums, it's going to cost you 20 Smarties looking at the craft. Time's a constant. It's fixed. We all have the same 24 hours to use. And so when you look at where some people are wildly successful in real estate and some people are not, it's how they're spending their time. So if you're doing high value activities, that's less low value activities you have time for and vice versa. So if you spend eight hours of work a day on activities that are worth $15 an hour, you literally don't have that time to spend on the $50 an hour, $100 an hour task. It doesn't just limit your day when you don't focus on the right thing. It limits your week, month, quarter, year. You get the idea. When you say yes to one thing, remember, you are saying no to literally everything else. You say yes to putting address labels on envelopes, that's a no to prospecting. You say yes to printing flyers, that's a no to connecting with your clients. And let's be real for a minute here. When you choose not to honor a standard of lead generation in doing your 20% activities and being dollar productive, that's literally one more day that you are saying to yourself and to your loved ones, I'm running this business on boots and welfare. That doesn't feel very good. So there's two ways to look at increasing your uh, possible use of your time. You can leverage your time and you can focus your time. So the first part of this we're going to talk about hiring and delegating to leverage your time. Uh, I'm going to ask if you uh, if you have questions, pop them into the Q and A section real quick. Sorry, but a housekeeping I should have said at the beginning, and then I will uh, handle them at the end when we're done. If I get distracted, I'll get distracted. It's my time to right now. Um, and then track, tracking and scheduling is a way to focus your time. And so remember, delegating and hiring is how you leverage your time, and focusing is time tracking and scheduling. So I've got you maybe convinced. Okay, cool. I see the math. I see the value. I don't know what to do. You will. One second. <laughs> first things first is think about what they're going to do and what you're not going to do. So the things that you shouldn't be doing right now that aren't productive for you, spelled out right here, instead of office duties, like answering your phone, opening your mail, posting and organizing your mail, uh, checking if you have enough paper clips, uh, reordering pens, all that stuff. You shouldn't be doing any of it. General customer service, answering the phone. Call, you know, someone calls and uh, I can't get into this house. My uh, lockbox isn't working. Can someone meet me? That's not something that you as an agent should be answering that phone call. Uh, any marketing stuff, like updating websites, updating your blog, posting listings on Facebook, social media, posting ads and what have you on social media, creating flyers, mailers, and videos. Yeah, there's some of that as an agent you're going to do for sure. But in general, you are not going to be the person who should be doing all of that. You're also going to create, have them create and manage the uh, systems for buyers and sellers and client database. But oftentimes I'll hear people say, we have a checklist. We take care of it by checking it off. Your app is going to automate it for you. Sorry, I went too fast. Your app is going to automate that for you and oversee the you know, aspects of the transaction. So they're going to make sure the initial contact happens. They're going to make sure everyone has the contract. They're going to make sure inspections are scheduled. And you as an agent will have to step in from time to time. You'll have to say, okay, we have a home inspection report. Let's talk about what repairs we're going to ask for. That's a client activity. You need to do that. 
As far as scheduling it though, and then emailing over the addendum that you've prepared with your clients, that's admin work. They'll also schedule any photos. They'll schedule showing, doing the marketing materials, making sure there's flyers in the property. All these things that you're very busy doing all day long, that's stuff that the admin should be doing. You all, they'll also take care of updating and maintaining communication with the clients and the agents, lender. So, you know, have to follow up, say, hey, did we get the commitment yet? That's an email they would send. And make sure they have the paperwork in order and then hold you accountable to the things that you need to be doing. Hey, did you do your lead generation today? So, big picture. How do you hire? You would do some pretty basic, easy things. I always recommend setting up a specific email address for the application. Set up a Google Voice number two for people to call. This way you are able to focus on your 20% stuff and set aside time to specifically deal with these emails. If you're one of those people who likes to live in your email, you're gonna, oh, hold on, hold on, I'm imagining one. You're gonna get distracted by these coming in. That's why we say set up a separate email address. You can also post the ad on any relevant websites like social media, Craigslist, Indeed, LinkedIn. Also talk to your lender partner. Who do you know that might be looking for a position as an admin? Ask your you know, title, everyone. It's just reach out to people and find out who they know that might be a good fit. The sample ad that you're gonna do is something like this. We thrive within a creative and collaborative culture. We're being at the forefront of real estate is our primary goal. We're looking for adaptable, I'm skipping some words, flexible and creative people who want to be part of a dynamic environment. You'll be responsible for assisting agents with all aspects of real estate. I like to add one thing to this ad. I always tell my clients that I'm coaching to put in a word that makes no sense in the ad. Um, so for example, one of my clients uses the word mango. And so please include the word mango in your email with your resume. You put that towards the end of the ad. The reason you do that, the reason I tell my clients to do that is because generally when you're hiring for an admin, you're, you want someone who has a good attention to detail. So that's a good way to screen people out. If they don't catch that, that means they're not paying attention to the detail. That's just a little, uh, a little tip and trick that I've used over time and I find it has been very helpful. So here's the steps of hiring. Step one, you're gonna get resumes and voicemails. So you're gonna look at the resumes, listen to the voicemails, do an initial screening based on that. You'll probably get a bunch of resumes and voicemails. You basically have to use, okay, they look experienced, they don't look experienced. You're gonna to have to train whoever you hire, but you don't necessarily wanna spend six hours teaching them how to use Google Voice. And so that's use your best judgment and see who you think might be a good fit. Really easy step one, right? Step two, you're going to get the application and have them take a disk assessment. You probably have about 10 to 15 people at this point. That's what you're going to get at the end of this webinar, a link to take a disk assessment. So not only you'll know yours, but you can also use one for an admin if you need to. So you'll go through, look at the disk. You're going to look at any applications and their disk. And again, here's the detail thing. If somebody sends you their resume and you send them the disk point to take it and they don't send you a disk back, guess what? They're out of the list of people that interview. you. Problem solved because they self eliminate themselves by not following a step, by not paying attention to the detail. So again, anyone that doesn't pass that level of screening, you're going to send them a rejection email and then schedule the next step. The next step is, oh, sorry, more about the disk. So you're going to interview for intelligence. That's what the point of the interview is. References tell us about integrity, and then you review the disc for behavior weaknesses and strengths. Knowing your disc is going to let you know what your weaknesses are. And so if you have a really high D and a really high I, and not necessarily a very strong compliance or steadiness, you're going to want an admin that has a very high compliance and steadiness. Usually, in general, the ideal admin will lead with a CS or a SB, but remember, it's not the only factor. The disc is for behavioral weaknesses and strengths. We don't hire by the disc, though. It's just more information. It's another filter that we put people through in the process. The next step is to do a phone interview. You'll probably be down about five or seven people at this point, and it's a 15-minute phone interview just to check, get a gut feeling for them. Uh, it's a pre-screen stage, and again, anybody you don't 
higher at this point, you're going to send a rejection email to it. They're not qualified. They don't feel like a good fit, whatever the case may be. This is a big one, step four, the face-to-face -face interview. It can take at least an hour, sometimes more even. And if you have a team already at this point and you're hiring someone, you should be doing team interviews. It's a great way to get everyone bought into how the team operates, how the team works, and really have a high level of engagement from everyone in the team. Also, what, is, what do you think that message is that you're sending to the interviewee when you're sitting there, hey, you gotta meet my team. They're gonna see how much you value that. If you don't have a team yet, that's okay. You'll get there. And again, you'll go through the process, do the extended interview. You wanna ask, you know, ask the questions about the experience, tell me about your work history, tell me about successes you've had in the past, what do you think makes a good employee, what do you think makes a bad employee. If you're listening for things there that are like victim statements, like, oh, well, gosh, you know, I, I did a really good job at my last job, but my boss was just horrible. And so those are the kind of things you're listening for. One of my favorite interview questions is to ask people, tell me three people you'd like and admire and why. And I'll tell you right now, anybody that's an admin candidate is really going to hate that question. They'll have a really hard time with it, but it's a great question. Because what you're, it doesn't matter who they say. That's not what you're listening for. What you're listening for is the why. And so if they say, you know what? My mom, I really, really, she's one of my top three people. I really admire my mom. She shows real persistence and dedication to always making sure everything was taken care of. That right there is telling you the persistence and dedication are important values to them. That's something that you, that's a good thing. So you're, it gives you a really good insight into what some other top values might be when you ask that question. And again, people with a high CNS don't usually love that question, but it's a really good one to get in deep for the, uh, for the information. Um, so that would be the next step, or excuse me, step four. Step five is select who you're hiring. So you're going to select a candidate. You're going to check their references. And on here I say go three deep. I'm going to tell you all what I mean by that. So when you go three deep on a reference, what you think about sometime, anytime you've ever given anybody references. You probably went to the people and said, hey, is it okay if I use you as reference? I'm applying to this job. I really want to get it, da, 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 da. And they're like, yeah, of course. Of course they say, yeah, because they love you. They think you're amazing. They want to give you a good reference. And so that's fantastic that they want to give you a good reference. As someone who's hiring, I want to make sure I'm asking enough people those questions. And so I'm going to call your first reference and, you know, Bob's going to say, oh, my gosh, Joe is amazing. You should hire him. We were always really pleased with him. He always showed up on time, always took care of his duties. Great. Fantastic reference. So then I'm going to say, hey, do you know anyone else I should talk to about Joe? It's a great way to just get dig a little deeper. It's not a name I've been given by the person I'm interviewing. And so then you talk to Susie, and Susie's one deep. And then you say to Susie, oh my gosh, thank you so much for telling me about Bob. Is there anyone else I should talk to about him? You can't ask questions that aren't legal. Uh, you know, there's, there's certain things you can ask. Would you hire them again? You can't say, well, you know, did they, I don't know, <laughs> I can't even think of an example. But there's certain questions you can ask, certain questions you can't ask. But by asking people who weren't told to expect it, you're going to get a little deeper and get a really good picture. If you go three deep on three references, you're going to have an amazing picture of what that person is. And there's going to be some people who say, you know what, I really can't think of anyone else you should talk to. Not every time are they going to say, yes, you should talk to James, and his number is 555-1212. But if you could even get free time, you're going to have amazing insight into your candidate. Then you're going to actually you check the references. They're amazing. The disc fits perfectly with what you're looking for. You know how to communicate to this person. Um, their experience is impeccable, you're ready to hire them. You're going to send them a visit offer by email. And you're going to let all the people that didn't make the cut, hey, thanks so much for your time, and thank you so much for applying. We decided to go with another candidate at this time. And then you follow up with a phone call, answer your questions, and set a start date. Hiring, easy, easy, easy. 
<laughs> so here's the next lie we tell ourselves. I can't train them. You don't have to, you don't have time to not train them. It is more work right now. I'll fully admit this, but it's going to create more high value time for you later. We do have an amazing program for admin mastery it's called admin mastery program. Um, and if you want more information on that, there's going to be information at the end of the slide for uh, contact information. And you'll be able to reach out to Nate is whose email I have in there. You'll be able to reach out to me to get more information on that. Uh, you will also get a copy of the slides. Like I said, you can get a copy of uh, or a disc link for yourself and one other person to take a disc. So if you don't have time, we've got this program. It's still going to take time for you. It still requires a commitment from you to set that person up for success. When I've had clients tell me, you know what, they're just not working out, the first thing I ask them is, did you give them every tool they needed to succeed? Because ultimately, it's on us to make sure our people know how to do their job. And so when we held up that commitment to them and we've made sure they know how to do it, that's when you can recognize there's a problem. But whenever someone tells me I have a problem with this employee, the first place I tell them to look is at themselves. So we do have this great program. You don't have to use this program if it's not something you have or want access to right now. Because we also have the job description that I spelled out for you. And so you go back to the job description, even if you don't have AMP, that's what you need to teach them to do. And so you, and most of those jobs you've been doing, and if they're really high C and S, they're probably gonna figure out a lot of those things on their own. So if you've been handling doing a mailing to your farm area, which you shouldn't have been doing, you can then take that and say, okay, this is what I've done in the past. They're probably gonna write it all down. They're probably gonna make a workflow from it. And then all of a sudden you have a system and process. And so you literally just say, okay, these are the things that are now your job. This is how I've done it in the past. Generally speaking, you're gonna find a good admin hire that's gonna come to you and say, hey, you know, I found this better way to do it. Great. Let them thrive, empower them to develop systems and processes like that. And they will create systems, which are anytime you do something three times, you should have a system. They'll create operations to flow through it. It's, it's, it's almost game changing how much you can get, it is game changing, how much you can get done when you have the right person in that role, because they're gonna create things for you that you didn't even know you needed. And once you have them, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, this is profound. You're gonna be able to delegate. You know, this is another lie we hear. I, I don't delegate because it takes someone longer or takes longer to show someone how to do it and I'll just do it myself. That's another piece of that is, and they'll do it wrong anyway. I, I, I'm the best at it. That's a lie, wrong. It, when you teach someone how to do something, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to agents and they've said, you know what? I thought I was great at doing this newsletter. And then I hired my admin to do it and they do it so much better than me. Generally speaking, the things that you're doing, the low value things you're doing, are not your strength. And so when you look at what those weaknesses are in yourself, if you're trying to just handle them, they're going to do it better than you. It's not just that they're going to do it, but they're going to do it better than you. Remember, leveraging your time includes delegation. So the admin you hire is going to take all the 80% tasks off your plate, and you'll focus on the 20%, which results in 80% of your income. You also have to make sure you take time to inspect what you expect. And so when you delegate to your key team members, and if you're on your first admin hire right now, that's team member, and that's cool. You need to have accountability from them on a regular basis. As they do your 80% stuff, remember to, again, inspect what you expect. Have a daily huddle every day. Check in with them and hold them accountable on moving tasks and projects forward. This is when you're gonna hear about the things that they're gonna blow you away with. Like, Hey, so I found this really cool way to boost our posts in social media. And you're like, oh, I never had time to do that before. And they're going to take it to the next level for you. I was talking to one of my coaching clients recently, Brian, and um, he was, I asked him, he said, how has your admin, Brandon, made a difference in your life? And he's like, just, he's like, how much time do you have? And what he basically said was that, you know, Brandon has taken over all the marketing and technology that used to take up so much of Brian's time allowing him to focus more on prospecting and agent development so he can grow his team. He's moved into the CEO mindset, recognizing that his job is not just to create real estate leads, it's also to create agent leads. And so he has people lined up to step into the role as he grows his business and that they're going to be a part of that growth. 
He's also hit, was telling me that Brandon has taken on uh, the title client care coordinator. And so he does all the MLS and listing input and the transaction coordination. Can you imagine what your life would look like if you didn't have to do transaction coordination anymore as a solo agent? It's, it's amazing the amount of time you free up. And it's not time you're freeing up to go sit on the sofa and watch bomb, or watch soap operas and eat bonbons. It's time you're freeing up to work on your 20% to be dog productive, to talk to your sphere, to have a top 50 program, to really engage with people because real estate is a contact sport. And so the more contacts you make, the more business you're going to do. It is a math formula. There's no silver bullet, but it's a math formula. And he also was telling me that Brandon steps in when an agent has a question, so it doesn't stop his day. Uh, one of my least favorite things as a, as a team owner is got a minute? Got a minute? There's nothing that's going to take your time more than the got a minute. And it's, it's not necessarily just from people on your team. You can have agents in your office coming by your office. Hey, you got a minute? What I tell my clients to do is block time for got a minute. And Brian has taken it a step further. He now has Brandon handling all this got a minute. Of course, he steps in when it, you know, you have to have some of the license answer, but it's a fantastic way to delegate that. So there's different tiers of delegation. I'm actually going to start from level five and work my way up to one. So level five is when the admin's just empowered to do what they think is best. Uh, example, if they think they should send a birthday card to your client four days before or six days before. As long as they get there in time, that's all that matters. They can handle that. They're more than confident. Level four, you're going to have them empower them to make the decision. Just tell me what you did. Level three is where they're going to research it, outline the options, and then recommend you. This is what I think I should, we should do. And you're probably going to say, yep, that's perfect, or let's tweak that a little. Level two and level one are decisions that you're going to make as the, the team owner. It's level two, they're going to research the topic, let you know what they found, and you're going to make the decision. Level one, you're just going to tell them what to do. So it's an amazing way to leverage out even decision-making process on systems and workflows and all of that by having an admin do it. Because all the time that you're going to spend on anything level two through five on researching it, or as I like to call them, scrolls running across our desk, you have someone else doing for you. And so you're spending your time, again, on your 20%, which takes us to how do we focus on our 20%? We have good habits bad habits. <laughs> and then there's sometimes just where our habits are decent and they could do better. Uh, in truth, the difference between those who failed and succeeded lies in the difference of their habits. So good habits are the key to success, and bad habits are the unlocked door to failure. Uh, as Ogden Dino says, the greatest man, salesman in the world, I will form good habits and become their slave. Once you have the admin, you get to focus on your 20%. You get to focus on the good habits as a realtor that you should have as a lead generation machine. And you get to really dial in on the things that are going to make you money. One of the tools we have that you're going to get at the, from the link at the end is our daily success habits. Once you have an admin, you get to focus on the 61 points of rhythm. Everything on there are what you should celebrate every day when you hit 61 points. Those are the things that result in closing. That's it. When you have that, that admin working for you, it's, it's a, an amazing thing, the time that frees up for you to do that. Your business will grow and you can scale. So as you do that, you can also track your time. Again, because they freed up the time for you to be really dialed in on your dollar productive activities, you can figure out where you have an opportunity to do that better. If your calendar looks like this, you're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> I will fully own that. And I've seen my calendar look worse than this, and it was before I had an admin, before I made that first hire. It was just, it was scary. I, I was working, you know, nonstop, 14 hour days. And I did a decent uh, business my first year in real estate. The amount I was able to do once I had that admin hired was just incredible. And so, another great tool that you're going to get, so many goodies this webinar is a, a link to see the perfect week. And that's goal setting for your time. Once you can take the things off that are time wasters for you, 
and not just you know by choice time wasters like scrolling Facebook, but time wasters that just don't result in dollar productive activity for you. So your 80% stuff. Once you have that admin, you can really get dialed in on the things you need to do with your time every day. So appointments, prospecting. This is not really a good example of the purposes, by the way. It doesn't have that on there. But practicing role play, um, working your top 50, following up with your leads. You can really get intentional about how you spend your time. And it's amazing how much more business you can do in less time. I remember one of my first coaching clients when I it started with Workman bought me for probably about six months on hiring an admin. She just was she wasn't happen. And then she finally said, you know what? You're right. I need to hire an admin. And the growth that her business and her team has experienced has been profound. But the biggest impact for her was she got her evenings back. She was able to schedule regular date nights with her husband. She was able to schedule regular date nights with her kids. So it's, it's really profound the impact that having that person who's taken all the fake work off your desk, all the stuff that just doesn't result in income for you, to have that person, you can be so much more deliberate with how you spend your time and do more business in less time. Going back to the uh, Pareto principle and spend your time, you know, those the big rocks are the 20% thing. Uh, when you try to put all of the stuff into a jar that you need to do, if you don't start with the big rocks first, they're not going to all fit. And so when we look at the things we do, we need to do, you know, Mark Twain said, if you have to eat a big frog, um, eat eat it first thing in the morning. If you have to eat two of them, eat the biggest one first. That's what Brian Tracy's book, you know, Frog and Bacon, actually, is that Mark Twain quote. So you take all the big rocks and you can put them in your calendar. And you can take the little rocks then and put them in the calendar. And then there's the sand. And any sand that doesn't fit, you give it to your admin. Any little rocks that don't fit, you give it to your admin. Hiring an assistant is going to be the game changer for you. Um, I was recently talking to one of our coaches and also a client, Jackie, and she was uh, sharing with me recently. She's got amazing, you may have heard her, I think it was, she just did a webinar. Uh, she's got amazing referrals with some top 50 programs. And hiring an assistant in combination with working that program took her from in just one year four million in sales to nine million in sales and in her words she had no stick in life whatsoever when she didn't have an admin and by hiring her first admin in 2016 she said it felt like i was meeting my husband my 14 year old and 12 year old for the very first time if that doesn't speak to why you need an admin i really don't know what will we can help you with this. Um, one of the things we offer as a coach, and it's probably one of my favorite activities as a coach to do, is to do an interview for our clients. So when you're going through the process, and you go through step one, step two, step three, and step four, and at step five, before you say, you know what, I want to hire you, you would actually reach out to your coach and say, can you interview this person for me? There's just one more set of eyes. If you have Someone in your office, if, you know, if you, if you don't have a coach, if you have someone in your office that you can say, hey, can you interview this person for me, and even set up that accountability with someone, it's amazing to get another set of eyes on it. Um, but we can help. If you want to know more information, uh, we do have private one-on-one -on -one coaching on how to build a team, how to intentionally create a seven-figure income and not work 90 hours a week doing it. You know, we want, we want you to work. 40 hours a week or really however much you want to work. I want you to be able to take a month off and go do that if that's what you want to do. Um, so there's, there's some really profound differences that we can help you make, but and if you email Nate at workmansuccesssystems.com, he'll be able to tell you more about this. Um, I have some questions I'll go through. Um, I'm sorry, I'm looking at it wondering what to do. Uh, Michael Everhart asked if he's licensed in multiple states. How does that work? Honestly, Michael, I don't um, quite know how to 
to set that up, but your assistant will be able to figure that out, how to set up your land voice for lead generation. Um, it might be a matter of having different phone numbers. It might not be. So that's something that your assistant could check out for you or land voice could help you with. Uh, we've also had a couple of people say, you know, great feedback. Um, Juana, I'm sorry about my audio. Is anyone else is having issue with the audio? My apologies for that. And another question that Michael wants to know is who works for EXP? And they offer a free web page, which he doesn't know how to do. How do you train them to do that? And how do they improve your social media presence? So that's something really interesting that I talked about earlier too. I'm gonna to, I'm gonna circle back to it. Is a lot of times your admin is gonna be better at things than you are, and so you probably can say to them, you know what, I get this free web page, and can you set it up? And they'll probably say, yeah, I got it. And they're gonna go track down the videos, and they're gonna watch the videos, and they're gonna get it all set up, and you're like, huh, I have no idea how to do that. And so a lot of times it's a matter of saying, you know what, I need help with this. This is something I need you to do, and they're going to have a different skill set than you, and they're going to have a better skill set than you, and so they might be able to tell you how to do it. And it's also the same thing with improving your social media presence. Different skill set, better skill set, they're going to be able to help you with that. Jeremy would like to know how I feel about virtual assistants. I think they're fantastic. I think that there is a different uh, bucket that they work in than an in-person assistant, so you can't always say to a virtual assistant, hey, I need these flyers to go be printed and take them to, you know, so and so or go pick them up from somewhere. So you have to think differently about who's going to handle what when you have a virtual assistant. But there's some really great virtual assistants out there. Um, Andrew would like to know what's the best lead generation program or facility, whatever works for you. There's a lot of great lead generation programs. Uh, it's really a matter of taking one and sticking to it. And I always say that the best lead generation program is the one lead. So the people that you know, the people that you like, the people in your sphere, uh, when you're starting out, that's the best way to generate leads. I, uh, I love our high volume lead generation platforms out there. I think they're fantastic once you have a, a great system in place, an operational ex excellence in place, and a foundation, which is what an admin is going to put in place for you to build upon to then do those things. Uh, Jerry also asked if it's, um, is there a salary reward system that we should be using to attract a greater admin? And so that I say you get what you pay for. Um, and so a lot of times you have to look at it, let me have vision big enough for the person that I hire. Uh, the Christy Buck team is a great example of this. When Christy started coaching with Burl, she and her uh, admin, it was just her and her admin, were working so many hours. And she did, you know, she did a decent business. She did a good business even, but they, they just had no life. And they both start, started coaching together with Workman, with Burl, and were able to create not just this team, but Christy also recognized that she had to have a vision big enough to support Samantha. And Samantha has grown into an operations manager now and director of operations. And so if you have the right admin, you can create that vision in your mind of what it's going to look like for them in six months, in a year, in five years. And be really clear on that and know what they want, know what their goals are. And if that's something, if you want to build a team like that, then build a team like that. And so it's, it's a matter of what you want to create and the type of person you want to attract. Do you want someone that's just gonna come in and do your letters, or do you want someone who's gonna grow into an operations manager? I know that Jeff Bernstall, who is an amazing coach and amazing real estate agent, hires phenomenal client care coordinators from his local high school. And they come in and they have energy and they're savvy and they know what they need to do. And so that's, that's a great way to look at it. The reward system is gonna depend on your market. Uh, Jerry, I'm sorry if you feel like I'm talking around it. So the word system is going to depend on your market. We do recommend paying them a base. If you're allowed to, pay them a reward as well or a bonus. But it's going to depend on what you're allowed to do in your state. In my state, I can't pay my, a, my admin per transaction or a bonus unless they are licensed. And so that's something you need to think about locally what you can do, locally what your market will support. If you have the right person, pay them. Pay them well. Uh, Paige would like to know about overseas VAs. Again, I think that um, I use overseas VAs. I have overseas VAs. I think they're phenomenal. They just can do different things than what your in-person VA can do. And so you need to be really clear on what that person's going to do. 
and what opportunities you're going to miss when you have them not doing it um, in the office for you. And sorry. The um, here's the link to get everything. Uh, I am still going to go through questions. I wanted to make sure I put this on for you there for anyone who needs to run. I've had a couple people pop on and say they need to run. Um, Michael again would like to know if he gets a good assistant to in a state he's not in. So you live in North Carolina with your license in Virginia. Uh, we'll fly to Georgia. Perfect. That's a great way to uh, to do that. Even better if you can have someone who is licensed in those states as a licensed assistant. That'll help you with not being local unless you already have agents working for you. Um, and anonymous, hey anonymous, has a marketing admin who can program CRM web pages, etc., but doesn't come from a real estate background. Uh, you don't have to create the content. Uh, but the question is, so I feel like I have to create the content and that we don't move forward with our campaigns without just me. Do I have the wrong person? Am I just being a control freak? I've seen amazing assistants come from not the real estate industry. And if you feel like they're confident and, and not just confident, but really talented, you might be being a control freak. They can learn the information you need them to learn. And so you have to make sure, one, you set them up to learn the information and think about what specifically you're asking them to create for the content. If you're asking them to talk about what the home buying process looks like, yeah, you're gonna have to help them along with that. If you're asking them to look for information on decor trends to create content about what's, you know, what's hot right now, then you're getting control free. And so it's gonna depend on what the piece is, if it, if it has to be agent information or just general real estate information. Trust them to do the research, empower them to do the research, and that's gonna be something that you just say, okay, you know what? I'm gonna do final review on. So that would be the answer there. Again, your free gifts, oh, not too far. Your free gifts are going to be a copy of the perfect week. So you'll be able to go in and design what your week looks like. Real talk for a minute. The perfect week is um, it's like a business plan for your time. It's where you set goals for how you're going to spend your time. If you hit your perfect week, I want to know about it. I've never done it. But it's an amazing tool in my mind to be more deliberate about how you're going to spend your time. We're also going to give you the daily success habit sheet, which is the have the 61 points for you to track your activities and do more of the right things. We often celebrate closings in real estate, and that's a great thing to celebrate. It's nice to get that check, but it's celebrating the wrong thing. You need to celebrate the activities that result in closing, and in order to do more of those activities, you need to have someone handling the stuff that doesn't result in closings for you. And so if you find yourself struggling to call everyone in your sphere four times a year, and it's because you're printing labels and making flyers and just doing fake work, that's why. The people in your sphere and those contacts and the people in your top 50 and those contacts is so much more important than making sure your labels are printed perfectly straight. That's what the admin is for. We're also going to give you the daily success habits so you can focus on how you are spending your time. And you can also focus on how to get enough points, which are the right activities. We're going to give you that. You can get a free coaching consultation as well. And again, free disc assessment you can use for yourself and a potential hire. Um, what's great about our disc assessments that we use is it's, it's easy to read for the layperson. So if you haven't studied this, it's okay. Because it tells you things like, when talking to so-and-so, do this. When talking to so-and-so, don't do this. And so if you just read that, one, about yourself, and then two, about the person you're considering hiring or that you do hire, it's going to be a really interesting shift for you. I tell people all the time, you need to meet people on their level, not on your level. The person with the most behavioral flexibility is going to have the most success. And so if you can go up to a client and say, you know what, they're asking a lot of questions about, questions about systems of the home as we go through and look at it. They're probably a high C. Let me meet them on that level. Instead of just saying, why aren't you deciding? So it's, it's a tool to use not just with clients, but especially use with your staff is to uh, just kind of have a general understanding of the disc. And just reading the report is going to give you that. Um, Michael also asked how to get in touch with me. My email is Sarah at WorkmanSuccess.com. If you have anything specifically you want to ask me, you can reach out to me there. Um, 
And again, you go to this, get your workingsuccess.com slash no more lies, and all these free downloads will be there for you. Um, Jerry asked if the uh, admin should be the opposite of him on the disk test. Yes and no. So your your admin is, you want someone who's going to be detail-oriented. So if you're a high I, high D, most likely they're going to be opposite of you. Uh, you do want someone who's going to take care of your weaknesses for you. That said, you probably don't want an admin that has no C and no F. And so while it's great to have the complementary this profile, you still want to lean towards someone who has the C and the F so they can pay attention to details, so they can be systematic. Um, like I, my desk profile, it, you know, I have high C and F in it. That's not the only thing there, but still, my admin still has that. That's still something I choose because I want that person who's going to have the attention to detail. So I don't have to worry about those trivial details. So yes, if, if you're a high I, high D, it's probably going to be complementary to you. Uh, if you have CNS, you still want to look lean towards that direction because you want that level of attention to detail. And again, a high CNS are going to find, remember, see the word mango in the ad and put that in their email apply to you. Um, I want to thank you guys for coming. I'll just hold on for one more second if there's any more questions. And then if you have any more that come up, feel free to uh, send them to us at info at workmansuccesssystems.com and make sure you get your and Michael again asked, should we, his dad be a licensed agent? How do I know they won't steal my lead? The person that you hire, uh, I would hope that you would feel that there's enough integrity in that hire or you wouldn't hire them. And so that's a culture creation that you're going to have where um, your core values and their core values are in alignment. You want to hire by, by values. And so if you hire someone that you're worried about stealing your leads, you shouldn't hire them. That's not a good fit for you. Uh, should your admin be licensed? If you can have it, some states, it depends on what they do or what they can do. Um, and so that's something that be state by state that you'll need to pay attention to. There are some great benefits to having a licensed assistant. So when someone calls about a house, we're able to answer questions about price or how many rooms. If they're not licensed, they can't answer those questions. So that's really up to you and what role you're going to have them step into at this point. But as far as stealing the lead, if, if you're worried about that, don't hire them is all I have to say to that. Uh, and again, if you guys have any questions further, uh, shoot me an email. I'm very responsive to email. Get your free downloads. And if you'd like a coaching consult or a one-on-one uh, -on -one business consult, please email Nate at WorkmanSuccessSystems.com. He'll be happy to share more information with you. Thank you guys so much for coming today. I've had a blast sharing this information with you and I look forward to seeing you next time.